I have reached 100 operating hours on my Kubota B2301. So now it's time to perform the 100 hour maintenance. Like the 50 hour service, the 100 hour service did hold a few surprises. Starting at the maintenance chart at the top of the page under the 100 hours column, uh, these colored and blue circles, that's from the 50 hours. We don't have to do those obviously, but I do want to come back to the oil change in there in a little bit. Uh, but we have uh, engine start system, greasing, uh, I'm sorry, greasing, wheel bolt torque, battery condition, air cleaner element primary, and the fuel filter, fan belt, brake adjust so those are all things that have to either have a cleaning or adjustment or inspection and then on the second page under 100 hours there is nothing however this is where you can end up missing things because just because it's not listed under 100 hours doesn't mean that it's not listed as a yearly inspection or a yearly replacement before starting with the 100 hour maintenance items i want to go back to that 50 hour service with the engine oil change I did a video on my 50 hour service and a, a viewer with a very keen eye, Mori Ali, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, pointed out that there is a different type of oil used for diesel engines. In the manual here it states uh, engine oil, the viscosities per temperature and that kind of thing. The next page has more information including information on API classifications and so forth and using low sulfur fuel. Any, Anyway, the point being is it doesn't come straight out and say, do not use oil for conventional gasoline engines in here, which I think it should, because I didn't know. I've never owned a diesel anything. So thanks to the comment section of YouTube that was brought to my attention right away, I was able to switch that out with the right stuff right here relatively quickly after that. Okay, scrolling down uh, past the unexpected oil change, nothing, 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 and we get to the engine start system, which is not re really testing it whether the engine starts or not, but whether it won't start. Testing for the safety switches and so forth. Okay, so starting system, near neutral, as is, should start. Put on the pedal should not start and it doesn't and backwards as well okay back to neutral okay that works Let's see pto on should not start and it doesn't okay pto off i'm going to start it Start the PTO and then I'll stand up and see if it shuts down. Okay, she checks out. The manual for the the main tractor by itself only lists out three grease fittings and you'll say hey i think i have more than that yeah you probably do um but uh, in the main manual brake linkage two points on the three point and then if you have the optional front end loader the grease points for that are in the front loader manual and there's 10 i thought there was eight there's actually 10 five aside one two three four no sorry 12 <laughs> 12 grease uh, fittings. So when we get to this part in the front end loader manual, after that are 50 hours or 100 hours or whatever, there's 50 hours between our last service and the, the, the manual states to lubricate the front end loader every 10 hours. So you're like, uh, oops. Well, I think that's probably referring to 10 hours of loader operation, not necessarily 10 hours of uh, tractor operation. Therefore, if you use your loader 20% of the time that you're on your tractor, after 50 hours of tractor time, that's 
10 hours of loader time, right? So this probably works out to be about right. On these grease points, I'll do a purge, a full purge, meaning I'll keep greasing. I'll see grease coming out. I'll keep going until I see a new grease coming out. That means I know that I've gotten all or most of the old grease actually out instead of just topping it off. Except for the linkages on the three point, I don't do a full purge on those. I think that's more of a uh, an anti-seize situation as opposed to an anti-wear situation. So old grease in there is not a big deal. Also, one thing easy to miss because there's no picture. Um, lubricate joints a control lever linkage every 10 hours. Of course, the control lever linkage is the uh, you know the hand control uh, for the front loader. And I just spray that with some white lithium grease. Also, what's what's in the greasing section is uh, your battery terminals. And uh, I don't know, like, whether they expect you to actually use grease grease on the fittings i use a dielectric grease it doesn't say that in here but that's what i use for those battery terminals because that's that's what it's made for as a matter of fact uh, if you had to you could probably use a petroleum jelly which is it's probably the same thing as a dielectric grease or very similar to but it's basically just an anti-corrosive just to keep your terminals from corroding Okay, so for the for the torque on the wheels, there's a different uh, setting for fronts and rears, and it's uh, like 58 to 67 for the fronts, like 100 and something to 100 and something for <laughs> for the rear. I'm not too worried about exact torque specs. I just grab a four-way and do it by feel. I'm, I've put enough tires on to kind of know when they're snug enough, so uh, instead of bothering with the torque wrench, I just do it that way. So for for battery condition, actually, originally I thought this was like a, a maintenance type battery where you needed to add water. Um, but what looks like a filler top is actually just a relief cutout for the carrying handle. So this is a sealed lead acid battery, so no maintenance on it except for it's got a little sight window, which is very difficult to see because there's a bracket in the way. Um, if it's green, you're good. If it's uh, black, it needs charging. If it's white, uh, the battery is done. So... Uh, difficult to see. I can't even get into it. Get in there with the camera to see it. I can see it, but I can't get the camera in here to see it. But it's green, so I'm good on the battery. Air element clean. The primary. Secondary down here is there's nothing, so it's only the primary and... So the procedure for the primary element is to pull it off and then not use any more than, what is it, 30 PSI of air to blow out the filter, of course, to blow it up from the inside out, right? But that might be moot, though, because here on 3 it says replace air cleaner primary element every 1,000 hours or once yearly cleaning, whichever comes first. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, once yearly cleaning, whichever comes first. The statement in that procedure doesn't really make any sense, but the chart is pretty clear about that. It's clean every 100 hours and replace every 1,000 or every year. So according to that chart, I'm a, I'm a year overdue then for a new filter, uh, primary and secondary, I guess. So I got this one here, which is an aftermarket, and the, both the primary and secondary included, which costs actually less than just the primary through Kubota. It also comes with this grease as well uh, to put on your mating parts to be sure that you get a, a good seal, uh, air seal. And again, I'm not too sure how necessary it is to replace both of these filter elements after only 100 hours. Uh, just, I mean, unless just age will deteriorate uh, the filter element on its own, I can understand that, I guess.
The fuel filter needs to be cleaned and the fuel filter housing just spins off by hand. No tools required, which was nice. It's uh, more than I can say for the factory installed engine oil filter. However, the joy from that was short-lived as the uh, taking it apart from this point on wasn't exactly easy. The instructions in the, in the manual just state to pull the filter out of the housing and then clean off the filter, but it doesn't really want to come out and there's no good way to grab onto it to, to pull it out. I didn't want to squeeze too hard with the pliers. I didn't want to damage anything. Eventually, I did get it out that uh, by grabbing around the outside edge and just kind of pulling up and then rotating it and pulling up a little bit and rotating it probably after about three ro full rotations I got it to the point where it, it would it, it actually come out but uh, there might be a better way easier way to do that I just didn't think of it I don't know the manual says to clean this with kerosene which I didn't have I've got mineral spirits I also didn't say how to clean it, so I'm just dunking this and trying to get everything off of it that I can. Also, this is the, the housing. If I'm looking in the bottom, there's definitely you know, some floaties in there, some contaminants that, uh, that were in the fuel. So I'm cleaning that housing out as well and wiping it down clean and then put it all back together. The manual states not to do this operation if there's more than a half a tank of fuel. Uh, otherwise it won't stop running out. I'm not really sure why. There is a valve in here that stops the flow, but when you pull it off, it will spill a little before that valve actually shuts. And then same thing, putting it back on. Before it's fully sealed, that valve will open to let the flow again, and you'll make a little bit of a mess. So that was something I wasn't quite prepared for. The final step here is to bleed the fuel system, which essentially just means start the tractor, be sure you've got at least a half a tank of fuel and uh, start the tractor. There's no bleed screws, you don't have to crack open injectors or anything like that on this, at least on this tractor anyway. The bolts that hold the front end loader to the tractor need to be torqued every 50 hours. And this was probably one of the least favorite tasks, my least favorite tasks of doing this the first 50 hours. There's two or three different size bolt heads, two or three different uh, torque settings for these, and I think there's like 12 bolts. Now the first time there was maybe three or four bolts that were actually under torque a little bit, but this time they're all still uh, two specs, so I think possibly, yeah, the initial retorquing was necessary. I just did it again and it doesn't really need to be necessary. Probably I'll skip it at the 150 hours and just check it again at 200 hours. Now adjusting the fan belt tension, or checking it anyway, in the longest span, see how far it deflects. I think it's seven to nine millimeters, which is basically between a quarter inch and three eighths of an inch and mine was in spec so I didn't have to adjust it so I don't know what's involved in actually adjusting it if it's difficult or not. It looks like you could get a socket in there to adjust it and at the very worst a box end wrench. The brake adjustment's pretty simple. I uh, just have to have 30 to 40 millimeters of free play before the brake engages. And I'm fairly certain I'm going to need this adjustment. I've probably got more free play than that, judging by how many times I've accidentally left the parking brake on and driven around with it that way. So I do need an adjustment. And looking underneath the floorboard here, this is the left brake being actuated. And then there's the uh, adjustment clevis. And the right brake traverses underneath the tractor there. You can see there on the other side, on the right side, that pivoting. And the adjustment clevis for the right side is then over on that side. It turns out there's a different amount of play between the left and right. So either they were misadjusted at the factory or they're wearing unevenly. And, and either way, it doesn't matter. They were really close anyway and uh, adjusted both of them and one of them took like maybe an eighth or a quarter turn more in the turn book than the other one to get them even back up again.
So if you just scan down this 100 hours column, you say, okay, I have nothing to do all the way down here. And again, my situation, I didn't realize. Yeah, some of these are yearly, so it doesn't matter by the hours. So, for example, the radiator hoses and clamps. Each of those uh, clamps, uh, the, the hose clamps, took probably a half, maybe even a full turn because they were loosening up a little bit. Same thing with the air intake uh, clamps, those are hose clamps as well. They took uh, a half a turn, maybe a full turn. And again, this is something that should have been done a while back, uh, before now, but uh, I just happened to miss it. In conclusion, the 100 hour service is not quite as involved as the 50 hour. The 50 hour had some of those initial break in things like filter changes uh, that occur early and then have a larger interval uh, thereafter. So, and then there were a couple of things that were the same, you know, greasing, you're, you're going to do greasing every time, you're going to do some bolt torques every time, um, and then like the fuel filter, that's only 100 hours, so that was something didn't do in the first 50 hours. I'm still not sure about this uh, replacing your air filter element every year, regardless of hours. Uh, this right here is the secondary uh, that I pulled out. It's got a little discoloration on the base. But uh, this is the new one here. They look pretty much the same. You maybe could make an argument for the primary filter element because it is paper. Uh, but even then, uh, every year, as regardless of hours, seems to be extreme. I stumbled across this evacuator valve. Uh, apparently, I'm supposed to do this weekly, which means I should have done it a hundred times already. And it's basically just a plug. Pull it out, and if anything's large in there, it'll fall out. Well, nothing fell out, so... Maybe my conditions aren't such that I'm ingesting big chunks of stuff. So I'm going to do that once a year. So a few unexpected jobs just because I didn't put hours on my tractor fast enough, apparently. <laughs>